Luke is going to be a tough act to follow. Try to get really excited here. <laughs> so uh, my name is Henry Schuck. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Discover Org. Discover Org is a sales intelligence tool that's uh, focused on profiling out the decision makers and the buyer intent and technology install bases at 25,000 companies and it's focused on the IT finance and marketing departments of companies. Um, we founded the company in 2007 in my law school dorm and grew it to a $40 million run rate uh, without any outside financing, which is different in, if you guys, if anyone from San Francisco, this is very different for those of you from San Francisco. Um, we're continuing to grow the company, so that's just a little bit about me. Today we're going to talk about predictive intelligence and retargeting. Um, so we'll start with sort of a broad definition of what I think predictive intelligence is. And for us, what predictive intelligence means is some sort of data or intelligence that tells you when a buyer is in market for your product, service, or solution. And so predictive intelligence is based on, or the foundation of it, is just data. And for most of us, that usually means the data that you're collecting on your own website. So what are people reading? What pages are they going to? What emails are they opening? Uh, what links are they downloading? What white papers are they reading? And for, for years and years and years, that type of intelligence was stuck between the four corners of your website. So the minute somebody left your website, you had no sort of insight into what they were doing outside of what they did in your email, outside of what they did in your website. And over the last really two or three years, there, all of these companies are sort of sprouting up that are harnessing a bunch of behavioral intent data and B2B data that's available across the social web to give real insights into what people do after they leave your site, what they're doing on publishers' websites, what, they're, uh, what technologies they're installing on their, uh, on their websites. And so to give you a couple of ideas of where data that can be the foundation for predictive intelligence comes from, uh, there's intent data, there's job post data, we'll talk about all of these, technology install data, Twitter firehose data, and financing events. And so I think what's really exciting about predictive intelligence is that the promise of it is to tell you who's going to be the buyer of your product before, you, before anybody else knows, sometimes before they know. And so to be able to predict who the next buyer of your product or solution or service is, is this, it's the holy grail of sales and marketing. Can you, through behavioral intent, through looking at at signals that are coming from this type of data predict who your next buyer is. So there's two types of data, I call it inferred intent and direct intent. Inferred intent, companies like Datanize and HG Data are companies that are looking at websites and looking at what technologies uh, companies are using by diagnosing sort of the back end of the website. So they can tell you when a HubSpot JavaScript snippet gets put on a website. They can tell you when a Marketo JavaScript snippet gets put on the website. Uh, they can tell you when an AdRoll JavaScript snippet gets put on the website. And these are directionally accurate for intent, right? If someone is implementing Marketo and they're not a Salesforce user, it's highly likely that Salesforce wants to know about that. Especially if they're using Oracle or some other on-premise software. If someone is installing Marketo, it's highly likely that they're going to start looking at AdRoll as a potential addition. So directionally, you can infer intent based on the technologies that people are using, based on the technologies that people are installing on their websites. HGD da HG data takes this a step further and they go behind the firewall and so they can tell you when a company uh, starts implementing a certain product. So if all of a sudden a company starts using a bunch of cloud solutions and this is a company that has generally been an on-premise uh, on-premise user, that's great information for those of you who are selling sort of cloud-based solutions. Uh, PitchBook uh, does, PitchBook and CapIQ are companies that, that list off financing events. 
for us, if I know that you just got venture capital, it's highly likely you have to grow sales. And we're a solution that helps you grow sales. So I want to know every single time a company gets venture capital financing or growth equity financing or PE financing. If I know that, I know it's highly likely you're going to be in the market to grow sales and that a solution like ours would be useful for you. Bombara, which used to be called Madison Logic, uh, is a really exciting tool. It's one that we've we've taken sort of a fire hose of data from Bombara and created a, an intent platform and I'll, I'll show you guys that in a minute. But what it does is it used to be the back-end platform to hundreds of publishers. So publisher websites used Madison Logic as their back-end to, uh, to uh, serve white papers and serve content and sort of manage the content on their websites. Well, what these publishers realized was sort of the garbage data that they were holding onto, the cookie data from all of these different people who come to the website and download white papers and read articles and do searches was actually really, really valuable to business-to-business -to -business marketers. Because if all of a sudden I know that Wells Fargo came to CIO.com and downloaded hundreds of papers on flash storage, that's really valuable to flash storage vendors. Now, to Madison Logic, it's not really that important. It's just cookie data that's garbage. To the broader world, that became really important. And so what they've done is they've taken 250, over 250 business to business websites and they've created a fire hose of intent data. And it's just cookie data that, that, uh, that tells you what companies are doing across hundreds of thousands of different web pages. And if you take that data and you aggregate it and you analyze it, you can make some really great assumptions about who's in market for a certain product. Last week, Wells Fargo didn't download any flash storage articles. This week, they downloaded 200 flash storage articles. That's telling you something about their intent around flash storage or CRM or marketing automation or whatever it might be. One in analytics and burning glass, they scrape the web for job postings. Uh, to give you an example of a way we see companies using this type of data, uh, this type of intent data, they, uh, they have open APIs that sort of pull the data in and they look for job postings with words like implementing or project or uh, developing or a new initiative to. And then they link that to their product or solution, cybersecurity, storage, uh, CRM, marketing automation. And so if you see job postings where it says, we're implementing a flash storage solution, all of a sudden, that's an incredible piece of intent data for companies in that business. For us, we look at any time someone's hiring a sales rep who's in, a, in the technology business. Because we know if you're hiring a sales rep, you're obviously trying to grow sales, you're obviously thinking about growing sales, and so we have an API that, that comes in and every, every day we have a dashboard of companies that are hiring sales reps who are in the technology space. And so it's sort of harnessing all of this data that's available on the web, but bringing it into one place to make real decisions and make real actions around that, that data. And obviously LinkedIn and Twitter are pretty good places to see uh, <clears throat> intent data, projects and initiatives that people are doing. So when we got started with um, Bombora, we took, it's literally 180 million rows of cookie data a week. And so what we got started with, we said, look, let's create a category just for Discover Org. And so we said, look, we want to we know who the top content consumers are across the B2B web who are researching lead generation, inside sales, outbound marketing, marketing automation, these topics that resonate with our company. And so we put it in, and actually, I think I'm jumping ahead. I am. So let me back up a second. <laughs> So what you're seeing here is a dashboard that we created using those 180 uh, million cookies a week. This one is on marketing automation. And so what you're seeing in this image is basically what we're saying is, tell us the companies who are doing the most research on marketing automation across those hundreds of thousands of websites each week. And so for the week of 5 one the number one consumer was a company called Landor Associates. I don't know what they do, but their most active consumer is reading about marketing automation, sales and marketing analytics, marketing tools, customer experience, and marketing management. 
the entire company is reading about marketing automation, sales and marketing, these other things. Northwest Human Services, marketing automation, sales and marketing automation, marketing email, email marketing automation. That's incredibly powerful if you're in the marketing automation game. It's also pretty powerful if you're in the CRM game. And these topics, there's 2,500 of them, and we've broken them out into little chunks of intent around, pro uh, around uh, specific solutions and specific products. Because our customers want to know, when someone leaves my website, what are they doing outside of those four corners of my website? What are they researching in the broader B2B web? is how you leverage this type of data. And the key to leveraging and operationalizing this type of data is to make sure that sales and marketing are aligned so that marketing is sharing this data, that you're building alerts and reports around this type of data so that it can truly be leveraged. Because it's great that I can tell you that this company uh, that this company is doing a bunch of research online about your product or solution, but unless you do something else with that, it's just garbage data. It's really valuable if you pick up the phone, if you have campaigns around it, but it's not very valuable if it's just data. So here's how we used um, Bombara. We created those topics. We created a se segment around lead generation, outbound marketing, inside sales, marketing automation. We linked those topics to companies in our Marketo database. So we went out and we looked and said, who are the companies in our database who are the top content consumers around these specific topics? To give you a sense of our funnel, it takes a thousand emails to generate one lead. It takes about three leads to generate one opportunity or one demo. It takes five de demos to generate um, one opportunity and it takes three opportunities to generate one closed deal. So to give you a sense, it's 15,000 emails to generate one deal. When we linked these companies to in Marketo, uh, in these topics in, the, in our own Marketo, into our contact database, it came up with 549 leads. And so you can imagine at a company where it takes 15,000 emails and leads to generate one deal, finding only 549 leads is pretty disappointing. But we played out the experiment. We took those 549 leads, we set incredibly customized content to those 549 people. Because we knew what they were searching on the B2B web. We knew the topics that they were interested in. And so we made sure that the emails that we generated were content specific around the same things they were doing research on. And those 549 leads turned into three closed opportunities in 60 days and put the largest deal in the history of our company in the pipeline. So the promise of this is real. If you can take this type of intent data and couple it with true marketing campaigns, it turns into something real. So you need to align sales and marketing. Marketing generally has a treasure trove of data. They have data from the website. They have data on, uh, they have technology install based data. They have data on what people are downloading and using on the website. And they have to be in lockstep with sales in order to leverage that data properly. So here's a perfect example. You guys, if, if you guys are using a marketing automation system, in probably three clicks, you can create a report that tells you who the most active, active visitors on your website are for that day, that week, that month. That's incredibly valuable data for your sales team. So at Discover.org, there's a dashboard every day that our sales reps go to to see who the most active people are on the Discover.org website who have not converted to a lead. And those are the easy pickings for them. If I visited 15 pages and just didn't fill out a form, there's a great opportunity for a salesperson to, to reach out. You guys, if, if you're in marketing, you sort of corral this data and the more that you can share it and integrate it with sales, the better. Contact and profile data, most of the time this is the missing piece between marketing and sales. Hey, here's a company who's doing a bunch of research on our site and then sales has to figure out how to make contact. You should be investing in this intelligence around contacts and profiles so sales knows what to do when you give them this type of intelligence. Live where sales lives, you should have 
alerts and reports that auto email to sales. If a perfect fit company or one of your target companies comes to your website, does a bunch of searching, that should launch an automatic email to a sales rep to reach out. There should be reports that are shared around the most active uh, visitors on your sites. Get your systems talking. So make sure your uh, intent data is talking to your ad data, is talking to your marketing automation system, is talking to your CRM. Your sales reps are probably living in CRM, so you want to make sure there's a good flow of this data in there. I have 10 things to talk about around account-based marketing. I'm not going to get to them all. So what is account-based marketing? Uh, account-based marketing is treating, an, treating individual accounts as a market in their own right. So the idea is doing marketing that's focused around one account or 10 accounts or 100 accounts, but having marketing that's specific around each of those accounts. So there's 10 rules around account-based marketing. I have three minutes, I think I can get through them. Number one, develop prospect specific offers. HubSpot does an incredible job with this. They'll send you an email that says, hey, I did an analysis on your website and I have five things I can tell you that can make your SEO ranking better. That's a personalized offer. That's really, really interesting. Information security companies do this. They go, hey, we did an audit of your website and found six vulnerabilities. I'd like to share that with you. Those are personalized, that's personalized content, personalized offers. Develop sales offers. It can't all be about branding and it can't all be about awareness. Some of your email communications and account-based marketing have to be asking for a meeting. Hey, we did this analysis, can I get 30 minutes to share more with you? Use retargeting and rethink retargeting. There are companies out there like Terminus and Listen Loop who will let you do specific ad targeting. So with Listen Loop, someone can, you can write a, 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 a nurture message to someone. Hey John, I saw that you visited our pricing page. Can we set up 15 minutes in an ad? In an ad. Hey John, hey Mike, hey Larry. And you can nurture them with ads that way. Terminus will let you do targeting specific at a company's domain. So you can say, I want to do ads just for, just at Cisco. And I want to do ads just to the IT department at Cisco or just to the marketing department at Cisco. So rethink retargeting. Personalize the accounts experience on your website. Luke talked about that a little bit, but basically tools like HubSpot and Citera, demand base will let you personalize what happens when a visitor comes to your website. Um, create sales territories designed to convert. This means don't just use sales territories based on geography. If you're doing account-based marketing and you have 100 accounts you have to get into, look at who has the most connections into those accounts and assign them that way. Use direct mail with executives. You know how many emails I get a day? 300. You know how many pieces of direct mail I get a day? On average, maybe one, maybe two. I look at every piece of direct mail and I delete every piece of junk email as soon as I can, unless it's really compelling. Um, use social and intent data to know what's important to prospects talked about that already. Use a sales intelligence tool that allows you to build role-based contacts. You guys know who the right buyers are at your company. Make sure that you're buying data and that you're using data that aligns to those role-based contacts. Um, purchase white paper and webinar leads against your target accounts. More and more media companies are allowing you to purchase white paper downloads and content syndication against a list of accounts as opposed to against a certain buyer profile. You can say, I just want accounts from, I just want leads from Cisco and Walmart and whoever. And create one-to-one C-level -one campaigns. Your CEO should be reaching out to their CEO. Your CTO should be reaching out to their CTO. Those are a must when you're outlining these account-based uh, marketing campaigns. My name is Henry Schuck. That's my information. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email and visit us at discoverorg.com. Thank you.